Hi everyone, it is Monday. It's also the 15th day of April. Does that ring a bell for any significant reason? If not, maybe it should. And maybe you need to try to get an extension if you haven't already. It's tax time. And that, of course, is the focus of a whole lot of people across this nation. Just not your favorite time of the year. Unless you get a big dividend back or a big return which means it's kind of limited for a lot of folks. Nevertheless, it's the middle of April already. We have a April-like forecast throughout some of your forecasts, not the rest. A frost advisory in effect tonight, as we're going to see a cold one tonight. Very low 30s. will rebound dramatically tomorrow compared to today, which, of course, was kind of a low spot in between two pretty nice days temperature-wise. We've got the 80s. We've got the 70s. We've got uh, the 60s. 50s, 40s, and 30s if you want to count all of our highs and lows. And I'll get to your forecast in more detail in just a few moments. I've got several arrests uh, to make a report of this evening. I've also got some incoming video about some other things, a car wreck and some other items we hope to have here in studio before I leave you. And a long list of things happening on the community calendar as Easter is quickly approaching days away. A couple of things before we get to our local headlines, and we'll just mention them briefly, but some big news for the Appalachian uh, area as Brady Industries today and EN Plus Group announced their uh, deal to invest $200 million into Brady Atlas Mill by United Company Rusal. It's a Russian company, the world next to China. It's the very largest producer of aluminum. And this combination is going to bring together some $2.8 billion in revenue all considered to the state of Kentucky, one and a half billion dollars to Eastern Kentucky. These numbers valid, talking about just through the end of 2021. You're talking about creating well more than a thousand jobs, maybe closer to 2,000. Uh, also, that's just the construction jobs, maybe another three to four thousand jobs uh, as it all relates to the entire industry. There could be as much as 15 to 20,000 as many as 15 to 20,000 jobs created by this project. It doesn't happen very often. Plants like these, well, um, it's the first one to open in the United States in almost four decades. More on that to come. I don't have any to show you, uh, but breathtaking and not in a good way. If you've seen any of the pictures or the videos coming out of Paris, the fire is catastrophic. The damages are unexplainable. Uh, not just to the structure, which has stood since the 12th century, but to the priceless works of art and treasures inside Notre Dame, which has been destroyed for the most part by fire. The fire is still raging. It started in the spiral. The spiral has since been destroyed and collapsed. Part of a nearly $7 million renovation that was ongoing. They believe that might be where the fire or how the fire originated. No deaths associated with this fire. No injuries that I'm aware of but nevertheless absolutely priceless and one of the most iconic images, uh, not just for those of the Catholic faith, but for anyone across the world. Simply hard, hard to fathom the loss that they are still seeing. Got a couple of things, got a lot of things happening on, on tap for the rest of the week. The Sagersville City Council meeting will not be held tonight, but a special session held in a few days uh, because of some logistical um Issues. They, someone who needed to be before the council couldn't be till a later date. I'm told by the mayor that will be a special session. I'll announce that to you as soon as it is announced by the mayor's office. However, the McGoffin County Fiscal Court does meet in regular session tomorrow. The McGoffin County Board of Education meets in regular session tomorrow, and we've got a host of other local and area governmental meetings that we'll be talking about in uh, just the rest of this week. So be sure and join us for that. Join me right after this as we get to our first headlines of this Monday. I'll be right back. Your Sagers will save a lot. It's all about variety and savings. And these are just a few of the in-store specials this week. Whole boneless pork loin is only $1.39 a pound. Turkey breast is only $1.39 a pound. Dole classic salad mix, 99 cents a bag. And tis the season, Little Debbie Spring or Easter cakes are two for $4. Heiner's or ballpark buns, 12 packs are two for $5. And whole seedless watermelons are are in store at $4.99 each. Price is good through Tuesday, only at your Sayersville Save-A-Lot. If you've driven down the road, watched TV, or listened to the radio, you've seen or heard the ads for the Sign and Settle Law Firms. 
When I hear of someone selling their case for pennies on a dollar with these firms, it chills my soul. If you've been injured, it's all about the money. I'm attorney Jeff Lovely. I represent injured people who deserve all the money they can get. Call me at my Sirewell office at 349-4522, West Liberty at 743-1965. Spring's here, well, at the seasonal shop with new arrivals in every department like women's mud pie and Charlie Page clothes, the perfect addition to your wardrobe. And Simply Southern is simply fully stocked and they've got a lot of new items, new short sleeve tees, key rings, planners, caps, wallets, purses, and more. And speaking of more, Mary Square is at the shop. This beautiful line makes a perfect gift or a great way to brighten your day. Featuring everything from Bible covers to notebooks to lanyards, badge holders, bottles, cups, and ID holders. And their home decor section is absolutely filled wall to wall with new arrivals. All to make your house the home you want it to be. All at Fraser's Prater Drugs Seasonal Shop. Appalachian Wireless has a question for you. Would you rather pay $650 or $66 for a smartphone? If you think this answer is simple, then the Appalachian Advantage plan is for you. Pay less up front for today's hottest smartphones, and then pay just a few dollars more every month on the monthly bill. Many smartphones are $5 a month or less after you factor in the $20 discount from the Advantage plan. Compared to the contract offering, better service, bigger savings. That's today's Appalachian Wireless. Payment agreement required. See store for details. It's a new day of deals every day at Parkway Gun and Pawn with an always new selection of like new musical instruments, power and hand tools, not to mention jewelry, games, guns and ammo, and popular hard to find electronics from Guitar Hero to amps to a pro quality karaoke machine just in. It's all here today, gone tomorrow for pennies on the dollar at Parkway Gun and Pawn. Founded in 1974 on the idea that we all deserve and need the very best in medical services and patient-oriented care, but at reasonable prices we can afford, Big Sandy Healthcare and Hope Family Medical Center have also put together a team of professionals and providers, all at one location, all with you and your family in mind, with pharmacy, dental, lab and x-ray, pediatrics, adult medicine, behavioral health, and more. Come see us for anything at Hope Family Medical Center in Salyersville. From brakes, exhaust, suspension, fluid changes, to expert collision and auto body, to turning your 4 before or diesel from mild to wild, get real auto maintenance, paint and repair at Black Smoke Performance in Dixie of Salyersville. 349-8785. Several arrests making headlines tonight. This going back to the latter part of last week on Friday where a McGoffin County man was uh, the subject of a complaint and found to be in possession of a firearm, which he was not legally able to do. He also tried to run from an officer on foot, but was found hiding under a porch. Captain Holbrook, in his arrest citation, says that he was called out by Chief Rowe to a potential shooting at the Highlands Apartments, and then when he got there, other officers, Officer Cantrell and Officer Runyon, had already secured the scene and had a shooter in custody. They located two spent 9mm shells. They also found a Taurus 9mm gun inside the apartment of Jack Music's grandmother, they also read him his rights, and he stated willingly to police that he had shot twice at the unnamed victim, stated that the victim had dirtied up his granny's kitchen as for the reason that he had fired at her. He also stated that there could be dead bodies found in his apartment. Uh, he gave concert consent to search the apartment uh, and his vehicle. Uh, they didn't find any bodies. They found what appeared to be some silencers for a weapon or weapons. They say that the victim had a gunshot to her arm and possibly to her chest and was transported to the hospital from what we understand. And there was also houses, meaning other potential victims, if you will, in the direction that music was firing the 9 millimeter. So he was charged with assault in the first degree and wanton endangerment in the first degree. And he was also served with a, an arrest citation for a violation of an EPO, uh, which the female victim, the girlfriend, had in order to protect herself from him and keep him away from her. He was still lodged in the Big Sandy Jail earlier today. 
This next report actually goes back to last Friday, and right around the same time I was halfway through the early show with you, that's when Sagersville police got a report that a man and woman were involved in a verbal altercation in front of the Double Quick, the BP, on the Mountain Parkway. There was a 10-year-old child, their child, uh, said to be in their presence at the time that one or both of them had with them. I believe the female had with her, even though she wasn't legally allowed to do so. Apparently, both the male and the female were observed to be too high by store personnel to be in the custody of a child. They kept the child back in the store, not allowing him to get back into the vehicle. And authorities actually located the two people, Richard Caldwell and Margaret Ann Wright, at two separate locations by the time they arrived both in vehicles that shouldn't have been on the road, both under the influence, uh, and the list of charges goes on. So as near as I can tell, the child belonging to Richard Caldwell and Margaret Wright was in Wright's custody at a local place of business, a gas station. She had apparently gone to the residence where the child stays, where the caregiver of the child, if you will, had custody or care of the child and taken the child from the residence without permission to do so. Neither of the two adults allowed to be in the presence of the child without adult supervision. She was found at a local business after employees of one of the gas stations saw the two arguing outside. Both apparently appear to be highly under the influence to the point that the store personnel wouldn't let the child exit the store and get in the vehicle with them. Authorities actually found Caldwell and Wright at two separate locations. Both were manifestly under the influence of drugs and were taken to the Big Sandy Regional Detention Center on a variety of charges. All of this happening just hours after Wright had appeared in drug court earlier that day. In her vehicle, they found a quantity of gabapentin, suboxone strips, a bottle of what they believed to be urine pending further tests. And she was charged with custodial interference for taking the child unlawfully. Uh, DUI, no registration, no registration receipt as well. Prescription of a controlled substance in the third degree and improper uh, container. Um, neither of the vehicles that either Caldwell or Wright were driving had insurance. They didn't have uh, permission to be in them. Or uh, Neither one of them should have been on the road. While Caldwell was charged with endangering the welfare of a minor, disorderly conduct in the second degree, DUI, and no registration also both charged with DUI as well. Sagersville police officers Jeremy Watson and Tracy Sellier made the arrest and continue the investigation. And a Paintsville man sits jailed tonight on assault and wanted endangerment in the first degree charges for shooting a female for apparently dirtying his grandmother's kitchen. That's what we can find out thus far, with more to come possibly later. Paintsville police arrested Jack W. Music of Paintsville after he apparently fired twice, striking at least once a female who had an EPO against him. 36-year-old Daryl Perkins of Sagersville was charged by the McGoffa County Sheriff's Department with giving an officer a false name and information, fleeing and evading police on foot, and possession of a firearm by a convicted felon after the Sheriff's Department this past Friday, got a complaint of a subject, a Perkins man, this man walking around the Dawkins Trail area in Royalton carrying a rifle or a shotgun and known to be a convicted felon. Officer Holbrook notes that in his citation, rather, that after he arrived in the area and on scene, he saw Perkins sitting on a porch in the area and that Perkins, as soon as he saw the officer's car, got up and ran around behind the home or the residence and the officer saw the rifle propped up beside of where he had just been sitting. While searching behind the residence, they found Daryl Perkins crouched down under the back porch, uh, stating that his name was something else. He was later identified to be who he was, and that also identified to have had several active warrants in his name, and also a convicted felon who should not have been in possession of a firearm. He also later admitted that he had the rifle and was hunting squirrels with it before he was taken to the Big Sandy Regional Detention Center. I've got a lot, and I mean a lot, happening on your Near Easter community calendar, so a quick message or two, and we'll pick that up right after this. Car wrecks, truck wreck, disability, workers' comp, slip and fall, wrongful death. Your case matters to you. Your case matters to us. Contact McFarland Tinker Law Office. 
With our combined experience of over 58 years, we're here ready to work for you. Whether it's for a little pre-vacation tan or to look and feel better or just to come and relax for a few minutes, get your perfect shade on at Tropical Isle Tanning with the very best in modern tanning. They've got six beds including their fabulous seven minute stand up bed and their 12 minute super bed with bronzing bulbs. Or get a perfect sunless glow with Versa Spa spray tans which are 20% off all the month of April. At Tropical Isle Tanning in Sagersville and Prestonsburg, open seven days a week. Ultra low carb and ultra tasty doesn't come together very often, but it has at your Sagersville Lees with our new low carb plate. With tender all white bread strips, oven roasted in our famous spices, our famous green beans, and our new ham seasoned cooked cabbage. And for a limited time, get $2 off with a coupon in this week's edition of the Sagersville Independent. That's right, save two bucks and eat just about as many carbs at your Sagersville Lees famous recipe. At Sagersville National Bank, they know your house is much more than your home. It's an investment, and for many of us, the biggest we'll ever make. And whether it's for needed repairs and maintenance, or a new addition or renovation to give you some more room and more equity, let Sagersville National Bank deal with all the financial work and worry. Real and real competitive, hometown, homegrown, home improvement loans at Sagersville National. Your new IGA has fresh brewed coffees and delicious donuts made seven days a week. Daily made breads piled high with any meat or cheese you can think of. And come and taste the salads, broccoli and cauliflower, cornbread and their gourmet chicken salad made fresh right here. They've got fruit and vegetable and meat trays made with a little love and celebrate anything with perfectly professionally made cakes. All fresh and ready for your next meal party or event at your Sagersville IGA, where it's a new day, place, and way to shop. Just like that, we've jumped into the spring allergy season with all the buds and blooms, tree and grass pollen, mold, and all the nasal congestion, sneezing, itchy nose and eyes and throat that they cause. Don't get caught off guard. Protect yourself daily with a quick trip to Parkway Pharmacy for over-the-counter and prescription relief. And you can always log into parkwayfarmacy.com to have your prescriptions ready when you get there at Parkway Pharmacy in Sagersville. Don't drive or let your family drive in this or this before doing this. Stopping at Conley Tire in Staffordsville for brakes, oil, alignment, and of course, tires. Thousands of tires in stock every day to fit anything with six months no interest financing and over 33 years of quality service with a smile. Conley Tire in Staffordsville. Now let's talk about all things Easter and otherwise related to your McGoffin Farm Bureau community calendar. First up, the McGoffin County Senior Citizen Center is going to be closed tomorrow for their trip to Camp Nathaniel, so no meals on wheels tomorrow. And if you're wanting to go on the trip to Camp Nathaniel, you need to be at the Senior Citizen Center by 8.15 in the morning. And also commodities will be distributed this Thursday starting at 12.30 for everyone on the active list. They also want to say they can't hold any because of Friday being Good Friday, so Good Friday there will be no meals on wheels at the center either. Don't forget the Water into Wine Food Pantry is distributing this week, this Wednesday, 8.30 till 3. Senior Day is Thursday, 8.30 till 3, and Commodities for Everyone is Thursday after 12.30. The Stinson United Baptist Church is having church services starting this Wednesday night with communion and foot washing and regular services continuing on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night, 7 p.m., all those nights, and Easter sunrise services Sunday morning at 7 with breakfast after and Sunday services at 11. Several guest ministers will be there, and they hope you join them at Stinson United Baptist Church. A special call meeting is going to be held this Thursday night for all McGoffin County Shriners members at 7 at the Shriners Building. It's very important that you attend this meeting. The McGoffin County Extension Service is hosting two more days of 4-H shooting sports. Tomorrow, they're going to be hosting a rifle shooting event. Wednesday, it's trap shooting both evenings at 6, both evenings at the McGoffin County Extension Office. These are free of charge. If you have any questions, call 349-3216. And... A Good Friday Crosswalk is going to be held this Friday, of course, on Good Friday, starting at 6 o'clock. Everyone is invited to attend. They're going to meet at the first shelter on the right in the Ramey Park and then carry the cross through Sagersville in honor of Jesus. That's once again this Friday at 6. 
this Saturday morning from 11 till 7 that evening, there's going to be a benefit for Alicia Dyer Wireman, Elizabeth Alicia Dyer Wireman, to help with medical and travel expenses related to her diagnosis of endometrial carcinoma. It's going to be at the Lloyd M. Hall Community Center. They're going to have a soup bean dinner with all the fixings, a chili dinner, hot dogs, homemade baked goods as well, a benefit auction starting at 2, and live music provided by the Russell family throughout the event. If you can help or would like to find out more, call 606-548-1928 or 233-4383. The Royalton community is hosting an Easter egg hunt this Saturday afternoon starting at 4 at the Dawkins Trail Park and Ride at the mouth of Oakley across from the Meadows there on Route 7 at the Trailhead. All adults helping hide eggs be at the Trailhead at 2 o'clock Saturday and they could use donations of eggs and candy or prizes and if you can help them, drop them off at the Senior Citizen Center to Marlene or you can bring them to the Trailhead that morning if you're going to help hide the eggs you know, if they're already filled so you don't have to do that while you're there. If you have any questions, Larry Lanning, Paul Bailey, Marlene Howard, Karen Merritt can be contacted. The Sagittarius Free Will Baptist Church is having sunrise services Sunday morning, Easter, at 7 a.m. with Pastor Rick Goble. Breakfast will be served following the sunrise service. Todd Masters will be preaching Easter Sunday services later that morning starting at 11. And don't forget, Gene Ritchie is going to be depicted in the Kentucky Chautauqua series returning to McGoffin County. That's Friday, April the 26th, 7 o'clock at the McGoffin County Health Department, free to the public. I'll remind you when it gets a bit closer. Also, the North McGoffin Fire Department has their spring open bass tournament coming up on Saturday the 27th at the Paintsville Lake. You can register at 7. The tournament is from... 8 until 4. They'll weigh in promptly at $4,000 for first place. Other big cash prizes. Call 349-7777 if you have any questions. Whiskers or Wags, the Johnson County Animal Shelter is having a rockin' barkin' good time through the ages at the Paintsville Country Club on Saturday the 27th, 6 till 9. I'll remind you as it gets a few days closer as well. And if you have a calendar announcement, we'll make room. Just get it to me any way you can and we'll tell everyone about it. Going on to funeral service announcements provided nightly by the McGoffin County Funeral Home. We have the following this Monday. I'm told that 63-year-old Douglas Glenn Large of Sagersville passed away. He was married to Michelle Cannon Large, who survives, and is also survived by son Jeremy Douglas Large and daughter Megan Nicole Large. A brief visitation was held on Saturday. A memorial service is going to be held at a later date. 58-year-old Patricia Jane Cravens of Mount Sterling passed away. She was married to John Cravens, who survives, and as well, she survived by sons Justin Cravens and Chris, Chris Mashburn and a daughter, Jessica Wildenhaus. Visitation is going to be this Friday after 6. Services will be held this Saturday morning at 11, all from the McGoffin County Funeral Home. And lastly, tonight, 82-year-old Berlin Gamble of Sagersville passed away on today's date. I'm told that arrangements are still being made in his honor, but to be announced soon, by the McGoffin County Funeral Home. Just a quick update on the Hornets and Lady Hornets. Not much to update over the course of the weekend. There wasn't much going on. And then, of course, today, I don't think there was a game scheduled for tonight, but a little too cold for that. The Lady Hornets are going to be on the road this Thursday night is their next game. That is a road game at Betsy Lane. They are on the road, one, two, three, four, five games, counting that one until a week from this Thursday when they'll be back at home hosting Paintsville. That's the Lady Hornets, who are, of course, still sitting at a 7-1 and one record. Uh, the boys playing baseball tomorrow night at home, hosting Paintsville. That's right, 6 o'clock, first pitch. I hope to be there. Start getting in on a little baseball and more, some more softball action. With that said, a frost warning, frost advisory, technically. It's all the same. It's going to frost. So it's going to be a widespread frost tomorrow as we're going to see temperatures close to, if not touching, the freezing mark tonight so that frost advisory in effect from midnight tonight till nine o'clock in the morning temperatures anywhere from 32 to 37 and we're going to be on the lower side of that for much of the viewing area remember that widespread frost mainly after four in the a.m otherwise mostly clear skies tonight even though we've seen some clouds out there for the latter evening uh, we're going to see some clearing and a low of 33 and a west northwest wind from five to seven miles per hour that widespread frost continues in the morning till about eight, maybe nine. Otherwise, mostly sunny, more clear skies, 
75 for your Tuesday, accompanied by a light variable wind becoming southwest, maybe 5 to 10, maybe upwards of 20 miles per hour later in the afternoon as it gets a bit breezy, but sunny and clear for your Tuesday and mostly clear and 45 tomorrow night. Midweek, Wednesday, mostly sunny, 77, a lighter southwest wind, 5 to 8 miles per hour, maybe in the morning and then calming. Wednesday night, we'll see 58 mild degrees for nighttime lows and just partly cloudy skies. Then we talk about our next chance of showers. That comes in Thursday with a 20% in the afternoon, say after 2 or 3, otherwise partly sunny, 80 degrees out ahead of those shower chances with a likelihood of showers, maybe some thunderstorms Thursday night, and a low, if you will, of about 60 Those showers also continue as that system gives us more rain, possibly more thunderstorms, into your Friday, midday, latter afternoon by Friday. They'll start to wane, I think, but still a 40% chance of showers continuing that night. 69 for your high Friday, 45 for your low. And for your weekend, we're going to cool off for Saturday. That front's get. That front gives us 57 degrees for the first half of your weekend, a 40% chance of showers and mostly cloudy skies. But Sunday we rebound, maybe a 10% chance of some lingering early morning showers. On your Easter Sunday, mostly sunny and 69 degrees, though, will be your official Easter forecast. Sunday night, mostly clear and 48. And we'll start off Monday, I think, of next week, upper 70s and more sunshine above. Well, that might be all the time I have. That's nowhere close to being all the news I have just for tonight. We'll try to catch up. I don't know if it's ever going to happen, but we're going to try to catch up again starting tomorrow night. Thank you for watching.